Mark Jeffrey here from Big Point Player Training and it's Grand Slam time again and this is the second part of four videos about pressure and this one is about pressure, the pain of pressure, how it's your enemy not your friend and it's easy to do because every time you listen to a commentator talking about pressure it's always bad and it's always negative, it's a meltdown. I remember when I started this journey off, I was listening to Wimbledon competitor uh, Brian Moore, who, when witnessing a meltdown, said, has anyone anywhere in the world ever satisfactorily explained what this thing called pressure is and why it's invading the heart, mind and soul of what we're seeing here today, as another meltdown occurs? So you could be forgiven thinking that pressure is bad. Let me give you a couple of examples, personal ones from myself. Because the thing about memory is memory is tied to emotion, okay? So when we come to a pressure point in a match, the deeper the emotion, the more it affects you. And unfortunately, emotion is more wired to the pain and the agony than it is to the pleasure. So when you hit that moment again, the cycle continues. So let's look at Andy Murray, for instance. He's had, you know, the agony of narrow loss, and he's had the ecstasy of the win at Wimbledon. And you've seen him win Wimbledon, sink to his knees, do something that hasn't been done for British sports since Fred Perry, getting the trophy, being with his family. Deep emotion. But you've also seen him come narrowly short in a match and being interviewed by Sue Barker just sobbed. Poof. And I bet you that in years to come when they throw dirt over Andy Murray, he will remember the agony of that narrow loss and the sob much more so than the ecstasy of the win holding the trophy. It might seem strange to you, but that's true. So you can just now think of those victories you've had, like I've had, and kind of they faded and you can think of those narrow losses that haven't faded. You know, I can remember playing as the Army number one against the RAF number one at Wimbledon, grass court number six, wasn't expected to win. Got to two match points in my pocket. Served down the middle, he returned so well, hit it just below the height of the net and I really got into my volley and he hit it deep. And he had nowhere to go and he just flicked a pathetic backhand at it and I was right on the net and I could volley it anywhere and it hit the net and bounced over my racket. And my world imploded then. I went straight into it. how unfair is that? And about a few minutes later, umpire was going game, set and match, uh, but it's to the RAF number one, Peter Harding. Uh, and the devastation I feel now is exactly the devastation I felt 40 years ago. It doesn't go. Um, and if I knew now <laughs> and put into practice all those years ago, the result would have been so different because I was totally naive. I had no idea about pressure and the game within a game. I just did my best, improvised, spontaneous, reacted every single shot. No processes, no training of self, no ritual, no ability just to forget the next point, 25 seconds, focus on the next point come back to the self-fulfilling prophecy time and again. Army, semi-finals, playing against a guy called Chris Braithwaite, a grinder of the highest order, going to be a tight match. And I was six love, two love up. And I did an amazing shot and he volleyed it to the net. And I said to myself, oh my goodness me, I can't possibly play this well throughout the whole match. And guess what? Self-fulfilling prophecy kicked in. It became tight, tight, tight. He won in three sets from six love, two love up. Come on. So this is all the pain. So my suggestions to you is dislocate the emotion and the outcome. Forget about the outcome and what will happen if the joy and the pleasure is just playing in the cauldron of the moment. As my Kung Fu master said to me, Mark, winning or losing is like having a cup of tea. You win, have a cup of tea. You lose, have a cup of tea. The joy and the pleasure is being in the process and feeling all those emotions 
and having a still, calm, assassin-like, dispassionate mind. So, if you want to be a big point player, because all the commentators talk about the big point player playing relaxed and freedom under pressure and it's amazing, but no one, any in the world, says here's how you can become one until now. We train this. So if this is interest, subscribe to the channel, get two videos a week, get you out of your pressure prison, comment, we respond to everyone, and share this with your tennis network, but not with the people that you want to beat.